this is something I should have covered a long time ago, but still have not. Structuring your packets. Now, if you're new to networking, this is probably the thing that baffles you the most. Because with most socket tutorial or most beginner socket tutorials, you just send something like hell hello world across the socket. I mean across yeah, across the network, across the socket, blah blah blah. But what you don't understand is how do you actually know what's what, how do you do different things, how do you make the how do you let the program know the variation of things you want to accomplish. Well, now let's get started with that. Let's just make a new console app. Now as for now, we're not gonna actually go and create our servers, create our clients, and do this and do that. What we're doing is just structuring the packets, and you can just imagine that we send it across the network when we're um, reading the packet. Because you don't really have to actually send it across the network to realize what's going on. So what we'll do is let's create a new class. Oops. My bad. And name it packet IO. Now delete what was automatically generated and let's include system.io. Since we will be using binary readers and writers, and let's make a new class, call it packet writer, and it will inherit the binary writer. Public packet writer. We don't need to use the base constructor. We don't need to use the extension of it. And make a new variable, private memory stream. Memory stream and uh, our memory stream equals a new memory stream. And now outstream equals our memory stream. Outstream is, well, as you can see, the underlying stream used in the binary writer. The reason why we're doing this is because we're going to grab the bytes from it when we're done writing all of our information to it. So now let's um, create our method that will get our bytes. We don't really have to do much with the binary writer since .NET has plenty of methods that we can use already from the, from the get-go. Boolean, integers, chars, bytes, etc., etc. Now let's head back to our code and let's have public and let's add public byte byte array get bytes. Now call close since we don't need to um, use the memory stream anymore and byte array data equals memory stream dot to array. The reason why we're using to array instead of get buffer is to array will only return the bytes that we actually used. If we use get buffer it might return some no bytes that are that are already in the memory stream and we don't really want that. We just want what we actually have written. And now that we get our that we got our byte, we got our data, return data. Now let's make a new class public class packet reader inherits binary reader. Now we don't have to create a memory stream variable this time. Now let's um, make our constructor public packet reader byte data base. This will be our packet new memory stream of the data. And that's about actually all we really need to do with it here. Now, if you're wondering if we're not doing really anything with it, why don't we just use the binary writer alone? Well, instead of using the binary writer and making a whole bunch of different methods for writing um, 
any custom classes or data such as images or if we want to write our own class to the stream etc etc this is a way we can keep it all nice and clean and neat for example let's say we want to write an image to the um, packet writer well first let's um, add a reference and add system.drawing okay now using system dot drawing this is how this is the main reason why it comes in handy to create your own writer class that inherits the binary writer public void write will just follow the same pattern that dot net has image now I'm lazy var ms equals new memory stream. Now we'll save the image to the memory stream. It's nice and convenient for us. Mr.format.png and now close the memory stream. And and kind of like we did with get bytes, we'll call um well, image bytes equal, we'll call ms .to array and now we will call write image bytes dot length and write image bytes now the reason why we're calling bytes dot or I mean write bytes dot length and then writing the actual bytes is because in the binary reader the method read bytes takes a parameter of the length of the number of bytes you want to read now when you call write, it just writes the bytes, but it doesn't write how on the actual length of it. So this is the reason why we're writing the length first, and then we're writing the bytes, because in the reader, we're going to read the length first, and then read the actual bytes. But as you can see, when we create our packet rate, or the instance of our packet writer, we can use our method to write an image to the stream if we would want, if you want to. Now let's head down to the packet reader and let's add our method. We'll again follow the .NET pattern just to keep things clean. Public image read image. And also so you can see it's following the pattern read boolean, read bytes, read char, read decimal, etc, etc. So we're just following the same pattern here. Now for reading the image first, like we did, we wrote the length first, so we'll read the length, read it 32, and then we'll read our bytes, read bytes length. Now let's create an uninitialized variable of image, and now let's create a new memory stream with using, so it'll auto dispose, we don't have to worry about that ms equals new memory stream of the bytes we read. And now let's set our variable image equals image dot from stream. And this and dot net will create our image from the bytes in the stream. And now return our image. So now we took um, the binary writer and the binary reader and we extended it to what we need to use it for. So our custom method we can write our image and we can read our image. You can do a lot more with this too. You can uh, write vectors, matrices, basically anything you want. You just have to know each well, you just have to set it to how you want to how you want to actually write the class to the um, packet reader and the packet writer. You can also serialize your classes, but we'll get into that in another tutorial. Now that we have this written, let's do some stuff with it. Now, even though we've written that, you're probably still wondering, so what am I supposed to do with it? Well, now this is where our headers are going to come into play.